All right, Patriots, let's go ahead and get started on our next lesson, 8-2, Pythagorean Theorem and its Converse. You go ahead and take that notes there, and let's go ahead and fold it in half. Um, this one is meant to be one where you cut open the, the different tabs. You don't have to cut them open just yet. Um, you can always do that later. I'm going to go ahead and do it just so it's easier to get to. Um, you can tell by looking at this thing that we've got four different sections to this, and I'll go over them whenever I finish cutting. Um, we've got the general definition of the Pythagorean theorem and its parts, how to use them. We've also got the way to use the uh, Pythagorean theorem to find a hypotenuse, how to find a leg, and then also two other topics called the Pythagorean theorem converse as well as Pythagorean triples. Um, we're not going to spend too much time on those, but I want you to have some base exposure to it. Now, Pythagorean theorem is something you've studied before. Um, we're going to go ahead and incorporate in our simplifying radicals techniques that we learned last time. And that way, um, we're keeping that skill up. Instead of just converting to decimals, we're going to be reducing our radicals on these. Everything this unit needs to be in reduced radical form. So go ahead and open that up for me. Now, whenever you do Pythagorean theorem, remember that A and B are always the legs and C is always the hypotenuse. Okay, now it's always the largest or longest and located across from the right angle. So if we look over here, our right angle is this one. Directly across from it, also the longest side, is C, the hypotenuse. A and B are our remaining two legs, and it does not matter one bit how you, how you um, arrange those. A, B, B, A, doesn't matter. Now remember, our Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Those squareds are important because whenever we have an equation that looks like this, C squared is equal to 9, the way that we get rid of a squared is by taking the square root of both sides because the square root is the inverse of squaring, which means that C equals the square root of 9, which in this case is 3. Okay, now let's go ahead and move on to how to use it to find the hypotenuse. So in this case, I've got 6 and 8, and we're going to have our unknown value of C there on the hypotenuse. So um, what we're going to do is just fill in our Pythagorean theorem. We had A squared, B squared, C squared, so it's going to be 6 squared plus, well, the plus is already there, 8 squared equals C squared. Now our next step, just square them. 6 squared is 36, 8 squared is 64, the C squared just drops straight down. Now 36 plus 64 is 100, c squared drops squ straight down. Now we're going to take the square root of 100 and the square root of c squared. Remember that this and this are going to cancel out. And that leaves us with square root of 10, 100 is 10 equals c. So this one, the value is 10. All right, not that difficult. Let's move on to another one. All right, here we have the hypotenuse is 25, but we're wanting to find a leg instead. All right, same basic idea. We're just going to plug things in where they go. Um, in this case, 7 is going to be A, so it's 7 squared plus B squared equals 25 squared. All right, now 7 squared is 49 plus b squared and 220 or 25 squared is if i'm remembering right actually i don't know hmm. i want to say 625 but i feel like that's wrong 25 squared huh, 625 i was right it is 625 now, in this case, because the variable and the 49 are together on both sides, we've got to subtract the 49 on both sides in order to get to the next line. So our b squared is going to drop, 
And then 625 minus 49 is 576. Now we take our square root. And let's see if the square root of 576 is a perfect square. Ah, it is. It is 24. So b equals 24. So this one is 24. Okay. Easy enough. Both these came out the whole numbers. Uh, on this very last step, you know, for example, if you'd ended up with c squared is equal to 20, and then you ended up, I guess that would have been a b squared on this one. Um, so b equals a square root of 20, which is not a nice um, perfect square root. I would still expect you to come in and do the reducing radicals that we've done last class. So you would end up with an answer like this if that were, um, um, were how the answer choices came out. Okay, last piece. Pythagorean converse and triples. We're actually going to cover triples first. Now, Pythagorean triples are three numbers, okay, three whole numbers that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. Now, examples of those, very, very common ones you'll, use, you'll see are three, four, five, and any multiple of that. So we also could have multiple of those all the way two, and you get six, eight, ten, which by the way is what we saw right here. This is Pythagorean triple of six, eight, and ten. Okay? Multiply by three, and you also could have had I'm gonna do times two, times three. It could have been uh, nine, twelve, and fifteen. Actually, you can take a Pythagorean triple, multiply it by any scale factor, and it's still going to be a Pythagorean triple. Okay, another base one that you see a lot is 5, 12, 13. Okay, and just to make sure that we understand that right, 5 squared plus 12 squared is 169, 13 squared is also 169. Okay, so once again, we can multiply these through by 2, 10, 24, 26. We could also times 3, 15, 36, and 39. Another very common one is actually the one here, 7, 24, 25. And I'm not going to do it, but again, you can multiply those through by any of them. So the point is that if you see one of these, like right here, I wouldn't expect you to do all of the work, all of this stuff over here, if you recognize that this is a Pythagorean triple. Okay, I would honestly, you could just write this c equals ten, and you could just write Pythagorean triple as your as your um, word justification, because then I would know, hey, he knew his Pythagorean triple, she knew his Pythagorean triple, so we're good to go. All right, converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, this is the kind of thing that you'll get. You'll have a triangle that's drawn. The angle will not be marked as right. And then you'll have something like this, 5, 12, and 14. And the question will be, is this a right triangle? Well, the way we do that is by testing the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem says that if you have a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The converse, remember converse is where we take the, um, the if and then and switch them around. The converse says that if three numbers make the Pythagorean theorem true, then the triangle formed by those three numbers is a right triangle. So what we do is we test it. Now, C is always going to have to be the largest one. So in this case, 14 will be C. A and B don't matter there. So it's 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 14 squared. Now, a small little notation thing here. At this point, we don't know if this is true. Oops, should be a bit squared there. So the way we indicate that is by putting a question mark above the equal, or I'm sorry, a question mark above the equals. That says I am questioning whether or not they're true, not declaring that they are true. Subtle difference, but it's important for, um, for notation as you get higher in math. So let's multiply this through. Um, five squared is 25 plus 144. Question equals um, 14 squared, I don't have memorized, 196. 
25 plus 44 is 169 is not equal to 196, so this is not a right triangle. Okay, another one you could get is we give you the side lengths of um, 50, 130, and 120. Now, we're going to test this and see. We look at the largest one, which is 130. That one's got to be C. So we got 50 squared plus 120 squared. Question equals 130 squared. Well, 50 squared is 2,500 plus 100. Or I'm sorry, plus 12 squared is 140. Or I'm sorry, 14,400. And then 13 squared is 16,900. Now, when I add these two together, 14,400 plus 2,500, I get, oh, I forgot my question mark there. I forget, I'm sorry, I get 16,900 is equal to 16,900, which those two are equal to each other, so I don't have to put the slash, and therefore, yes, makes a right triangle. Which, again, you wouldn't necessarily have to do the work if you know, recognized that this is a Pythagorean triple because it is simply 5, 12, 13 times 10. 5 times 10 is 50. 12 times 10 is 120. 13 times 10 is 130. So that's it. Pretty simple lesson for today. Um, if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and take this opportunity now that we're done to... Uh, to uh, slice those, cut them. Um, notice on mine though that because of where they stand, you might want to actually cut this a tiny bit above the line on each of those. Um, otherwise, it gets kind of off. But good luck on your lesson and your quiz.